Hello, I've played a lot of old school RuneScape over the years, probably too much. And now, as an excuse to play even more RuneScape, I'm finally exploring what our beloved pixel game has turned into, RuneScape 3. Hello and welcome. So as you can tell by the decorations and the egg sign next to me, it is coming up on Easter time. And as we all know, Jagex loves doing holiday events. And I've heard the holiday events in RS3 are really good. So that is what we're going to start off with today. And I believe I can get there by the Lodestone Network. Yep. So we'll see what this Easter egg hunt entails. I'm already getting a little bit of bad vibes from this Easter bunny right here. His, his blank face and rapid eye blinking. Just, yeah, it just feels off to me. I don't know what it is, but it feels like there's something dark behind those eyes. I love having this bunny behind me because I'll never get to feel the joy of getting a pet in old school. So I feel like this is the closest thing I'll get, and, you know, it feels really nice. But now, I think the only reason he's following me is because I have to eavesdrop on something. I don't know. I don't really read the dialogues. I really should start, but I have the attention span of a goldfish. I can't, I can't do anything about it. But I did know that I needed to get banana slices, and of course I forgot about the tool belt again. But yeah, banana slices. I also needed two planks and grapes, which I think I know how to get, but we'll figure out that out later. That'll be a future me problem. There's no way this dude completed Monkey Madness 2 and has the monkey on his back. No way. Okay, so the second area has to be somewhere in the desert because the sun scorches down. The second area is the Dwarven Mines. Just don't know where. I don't know when I need what, though, which is the issue. So I think I'm just going to go ahead now and grab the grapes, which I th think there's a respawn point in the cooking guild. If not, I believe I can buy them from the chest below Lumbridge Castle. And then the planks, I know there's a couple spawns for them, and I'll just wander around until I find them. And then once I do that, I'll go to the desert. All right, I'm at an impasse. I cannot get in the cooking guild. I would only need to get three cooking levels, which yeah, I probably could just do that in a couple minutes, but I like a challenge. And I can't access the chest below Lumbridge because I haven't started the recipe for disaster quest. So I honestly have no clue where else they would spawn. In OSRS, I would go to Hosidius I'm pretty sure there's a shop or a spawn point for them. So, yeah, I'm at a little bit of an impasse. But I I actually, I think there is a spot in Varrock that has them on a table or something. So, yeah, we're going to wander around Varrock and try to find grapes. Uh, buddy, your, your house is gone. I don't know if you've realized that was it you <laughs> okay also don't know why but i am like 99 percent sure there are grapes in the phoenix gang hideout i again don't know why but i am so confident in it i oh i can't even get in there wow this is just one punch in the face after the other. Okay, I guess I'll just have to check other buildings. Okay, I have been in every single house and every single room that I can possibly access in Varrock, and there are no grapes to be found. The last thing that I can think of is I think there is a wine stall in... Draenor Village, I want to say, or Ardoin, but I'm pretty sure you can get grapes from there. I mean, logically, it makes sense. I know RuneScape doesn't always follow logic, but I think I remember this. 
So hopefully I'm right, because if I'm wrong, I mean, I at this point, I will check the wiki and suck up my pride. But I really don't know of any other ways to access grapes, which feels like such a wild thing to me since I've not played an Iron Man bo account before. But oh, there's not a wine. Or is it like in the market? Oh, there's grapes right there. I do get. God. Okay. Yeah, there's grapes right there. I can see them. Oh, God. Okay, well, I'll be back with grapes. As this is not quick to respawn. Grapes are finally acquired, which I actually think I'm going to get more because I don't think I'll need them for anything else in the future. But just in case I need them for another quest, I don't want to have to do this again. I had grapes in my bank this whole time. Where did I even get them from? I just went on an Easter egg hunt for grapes instead of doing the Easter egg quest. I had them in my bank the whole time. Where did I get them from? Okay. Well, onto the planks, which I think we'll have better luck with. I was about to be real upset when I saw that, like, the construction area wasn't there. They replaced it with whatever the hell this is, but there is a sawmill, so I can actually get the planks. I was about to be distraught if, I, if my RuneScape knowledge failed me, but some things... You, you can change them as much as you want, but I still got my planks. Okay, and that is 38 cooking. So that, this is taking way longer than expected. Uh, I hate myself for saying that I wasn't going to get the 32 cooking to enter the cooking guild because I had to go and get 38 anyways because I need to get 38 cooking to make a pat of butter. So now that that is out of the way, Hopefully I can make a pat of butter, make biscuit dough, and finally be done with this Easter quest. This has been a journey that I was not expecting. 90% of my playtime on RS3 so far has been clicking on one thing and ending up in a situation like this. Click one thing, I'm at a circus. And like always, I have no clue what the hell's going on. And that is finally the Easter event quest completed. That was a journey. Uh, I'll include a timeline or something that I draw up on Microsoft Paint. I, I don't even want to go over it again. But on the bright side, if... That quest just wasn't awful for me because I don't read things and I don't know anything about RS3. Overall, a good event quest. I enjoyed it. Other than every, every step of the way, I hit a roadblock and something bad happened. And I got 40 cooking, so now I can cook lobsters. Can't fish them, but I can cook them. Yo, the daily egg hunt. Fire battle staff, hard leather death runes, Phoenix Slayer teleport. I will take that, even just for the fire fire battle staff and the death rune. I don't remember what the Phoenix Slayer teleport does. I don't think that's an OSRS thing, so I'll have to figure that out. That is my first mystery solved. I decided to get rid of that flashing gold arrow because it kept distracting me and there's multiple times during the last couple of quests where I've accidentally gone to that arrow thinking it was a quest marker and it wasn't so I decided to finally get that done and complete my first mystery and try to understand a little bit more about archaeology hey other than figuring out what junk I can dig up there is another mystery I haven't solved and that mystery is why are 86% of you who are watching this video not subscribed? Well, good thing you can solve that mystery by subscribing if you like the content so far. And you could even, you know, hit the like button. But as always, I greatly appreciate the support. And hey, even if you don't like the video, please comment below if you have feedback on how I can improve these videos for you all. Thanks, and back to the video. Okay, so after digging 
in multiple spots for probably an hour i did something right because he found the missing dial and then i figured out this puzzle which i think is if the other mysteries are like this i think the skill is really unique and cool obviously like the actual just sitting there and digging part isn't that enjoyable but if you know it's going towards you know like a cool puzzle like i'm assuming there'll be more puzzles but like even like this little code was like you know took five minutes to figure out but was really cool just to have something engaging um but yeah i'm just gonna keep continuing on doing this because it's actually really interesting to me so gave up on archaeology because to get further along in that mystery i needed like 47 archaeology um looking at my skills obviously don't have that only at 26 so i decided to come back to the easter event and do the daily egg hunt to get my free reward casket so going to open that and see what we get again a fire battle staff holy biscuits mithril salvage zamrock robe tops and a willow combo which i think is better than what i have i'll have to check um but i'll take it might as well take advantage of the easter event so i'm testing out a couple of the different skilling activities they have for the easter event this one's the hunter one i don't know the rewards i'm assuming i get spring tokens from it i did like five minutes of the mining area um, and the XP I didn't think was really worth it, nor were the spring tokens. So testing out the hunter, and I think there's like a smithing one as well. And then I don't know what other ones there are, but I'm going to be here for a little bit and just kind of test out the different activities to see if any of them will be good for my XP gain um, and make use of it while the Easter event's going on. And got 30 hunter from doing this. Okay, so decided to switch things up and train some necromancy and just got up to level 30. So got soul attraction, output from ritual, decreasing the length, blah, blah, blah. I will read that in a second. Um, but one thing I did do was I upgraded some of my armor to tier 2. Now that I'm level 30, I guess I just have to go and increase it to tier 3 now. But really enjoying the skill so far. It's pretty interesting to train. And I know I've read a lot about it being, even after the combat rework that happened a couple weeks ago, still pretty much being the easiest and best combat style to get leveled up early and use. All right. And that is my necromancy gear upgraded to tier 30 after a little bit of grinding and doing that quick mini quest. And I think at this point now, I'm going to go ahead and do... I saw it rune mythos I believe is what the quest is and it's for making necromancy runes I believe but I'm gonna go and look and figure out how to get that started. There's a lot of content that they have updated graphically in this game and I love how the one thing they decided to just be lazy with is these impure essence which are just purple pure essence. I love how they just went in microsoft paint painted them purple called it a day but that everything else has been so insanely updated but we got told to go up to this portal to learn how to craft necromancy runes so i believe once we do this oh i have okay craft runes oh there he is that's a dude who always pops up on my screen and annoys me okay there we go that just gave me a rune crafting level. So now we have spirit runes and I'm assuming that we just go back and speak to that dude by the ritual site. And that is rune mythos completed. Got two XP lamps. I have access to making essence, incantations, teleport, and the lesser bone shield incantation. And with that XP lamp, I got a level and got the Blood Siphon ability, which seems like it's kind of comparable to like Blood Burst in the Ancient Spellbook on OSRS. So I feel like this will be really nice for hopefully some bossing sooner or later. So I came back to May after I completed that quest because I feel like I remembered really early on that I went and talked with her and there's something about quest points 
that she could do open shop maybe oh yep so earn quest points to claim more rewards your next are at 50 gp so what do i get i get a magical dice okay i have no more to capture roll and let's see what i get all right 250k oh i should have looked at this before i spent like two hours two or three hours thieving and squashing scarabs but that's a huge boost that will probably pay for a lot of my runes and some upgrades and i got black plate body g's how much 43k if i could sell them on the g awesome so i'll just have to remember at 50 quest points to come back to her and get another dice roll one of the last things I wanted to try, since I have access to a lot of the dailies, so the player-owned farms, wilderness flash events, which are more hourly, but whatever. Um, I have a, a couple of herb patches that I have access to, specifically right now the one at the player-owned farms. So the next one I want to do is the cash. So... From my understanding, what I read on the wiki, that is a divination D&D. So while I'm waiting for that to open up, since it opens up on the hour, I am going to sit here and get some divination levels. So just like everything else in RS3, which I should have assumed, there is a tutorial type thing that I have to do, I believe, before I can do the cash event. So I'm going to go work on that or not maybe um so then maybe the next one or whenever i'm on next i can go ahead and do it but for now that plan is out the window is this really what guthix looks like in rs3 <laughs> this dude looks goofy like this is a goofy looking dude and i don't know if i can believe that he was a god i don't know though i've seen a lot of goofy looking runescape characters so it wouldn't shock me if this is what he actually looks like. All right, and that is the tutorial stage done for the divination hourly event. So now the next time it comes up, I will actually be able to do it and try it. But now that that is over with, I think what I'm going to do now is check on the beehives again and then go from there. Should the grizzly bears be that close to the beehives? Do grizzly bears not like honey? Is that not all kinds of bears? I thought it was all kinds of bears, but whatever. But these beehives, such good farming XP. Um, I don't know exactly what level I started doing them at, but I mean, I'm already almost 40 farming already. Huge progress in farming. And because of that, I had some Raynar seeds, so I did start planting those and harvesting those. I've done that about three times um, for future use for prayer pots. Again, don't really know. I would assume that prayer pots are pretty important in RS3 as well. But regardless of that, now I have Raynar weeds, so then I will just need to get my herb lore up to actually be able to clean them, which I think my plan on that is going forward using XP lamps. And hopefully with how a lot of the other XP lamps I've gotten from quests are, I will be able to get a pretty high herb lore level just from XP lamps. So I was actually going to kill Chaos Druids for some law runes and herbs, but then I remembered that I believe, yep, the Mage Arena um, Magic Shop sells law runes. And I really want law runes. So as I progress with magic, I can stop just using the lodestones and have a little bit of a quicker teleport. Um, but I'm also probably going to utilize this for nature runes and some of the other higher level runes like chaos and death um, as I get further into the game. But I'm going to buy about 50 of the law runes just for now, just enough for some basic teleports. But I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just get my combats up to 40 and then probably just chug through a lot of the quests. And before I get ahead of myself, I'm actually going to train my combats by training a little bit of Slayer because I really enjoy Slayer. I enjoy Slayer and OSRS. So I thought might as well 
enjoy training up my combats and not just mindlessly kill things and work on two things at once. So my task is to kill cockroaches, which I believe I can find some underneath the lumberage or in the swamps, but I'll check the wiki before I just mindlessly wander around. All right, so I don't know why I thought originally that they were in Lumbridge. They've never been underneath Lumbridge, I'm pretty sure, but they're underneath the stronghold of player safety, which is new. I didn't check it out at all. I just went downstairs to the dungeon underneath to start my Slayer task. Um, but, you know, they just have to have another stronghold about player safety. Oh, I just got my first clue scroll. So I will probably actually go do that after I finish this task. And it's an easy one, so I'm assuming I can do it. Oh, yeah, I can do that first one. Awesome, yeah, well, I'm going to finish up the last 14 kills for my Slayer task, and then I will go and do the clue scroll. So I was picking up the carapace because I remembered seeing carapace range armor in the ranging shop in Barok. I was right about remembering that, so I'm glad that I picked these up. Don't have the crafting level to make the tier 30 armor, well, all of it, but that shouldn't take too long to get a couple more crafting levels. I have to say one thing that I'm really liking about RS3 is that the progression seems very smooth in comparison to OSRS for different skills. Obviously, that comes with the caveat that, you know, kind of early game, there is, you know, for melee, there's the typical iron, steel, black armor, mithril, adamant, rune. Um, and I'm assuming it stays somewhat like that aspect in RS3 with the tiers. But I just feel like there's so many different options and ways to progress. And a lot of it, especially for Ironman, you can craft a lot of this stuff. And it's on par with your level, which I know is one thing that came about when looking at um, melee armor is that the smithing and mining rework kind of fixed that issue where, you know, an R OSRS, you have to have, I think it's like 80 smithing to make rune items, might even be 90s, when you can equip it at, you know, 40 defense or 40 attack. So I really like that they've reworked kind of those requirements and the progression kind of in the game. The progression is feeling really smooth so far. But with that kind of tangent out of the way about what I'm enjoying about RS3, I am going to go ahead and do this easy clue scroll. All right, that was only a two stepper. So let's open up the scroll box and see what we get another clue. I'm an idiot for that because it said a scroll box. So it means it had another clue scroll in it, not the casket. Oh, lordy. Okay. Low raspberry at the monkey cage in the Ardoin Zoo. Equip a studded leather body, bronze plate legs, and a mud pie. I know how to get one of those items. And the other two... Actually, I think I know where to get a studded leather body too. So it's just the mud pie that I'll have to look at. Probably going to feel real stupid for saying this, but they're really uh, up in the requirement for these easy clues. My dude is looking like a snack in this outfit. Also, I love that you can equip the mud pie and it's a ranged weapon. I doubt it does any damage, but I just love the, the fact that it's there. Um, so let's see where is where even is the raspberry emote? Am I stupid? Oh, right there. There we go. And another scroll box. Okay. Hopefully this is the last step. All right, and that is the last step. And I have a casket, so let's see what I get. Six thousand coins. Okay, they have special arrows. This is tier fifty. Wow. And I got a water talisman, so I didn't have a water talisman before, so that is actually nice. Um, okay, so you can re-roll caskets as well, which I think is pretty cool. Awesome. Well, that is my first clue scroll completed. All right, so the Slayer task I got was cave slimes, so that required a lot of running around because I needed to get anti-poisons, which I was going to make them, but then I remembered seeing them 
at the general shop on Anachronia, which they were there. So I bought some of those. And then I also had to make a oil lantern. And then I bought a spiny helmet because I know for a fact that you have the, I think they're called wall grabbers in the Lumbridge Swamp. So to avoid damage from them, I also got that as long as they're still a thing in RS3. But now it's time to go down into the swamp and kill the cave slimes. I'm glad I bought the spiny helm because there was a wall beast right near the entrance of the caves. But with that done with the slayer task, I think that is where we are going to leave off for today. As always, appreciate the support. Thank you for watching the video and I hope you have an amazing day.